mother lashing out at former judge Mark Chivarella. Her son, an all-star wrestler, killed himself after being sent to a juvenile detention facility for a minor drug offense, an action that lined Chivarella's own pocket. Sandy Fonzo, the mother you just saw, she joins me now live. That's her son right there. Sandy, uh, tell us how you're doing, first of all. Um... I don't know. I'm just trying to uh, put one foot in front of the other every day. I'm just trying to just keep myself together, and I don't. I don't know. You don't know. I, How did you know? I had he, my son was my life, and that's all I had, and now it's gone. So I don't have that same life. I don't. You know, I exist right now. How did your son first uh, come in contact with Chivarella's court? He was uh, 17 and um, he was going into his senior year of high school. Um, like I said, he was an all-star wrestler. He was expected that year to take states. He would have been the first one in um, his high school uh, to have that title. And uh, he would have received a scholarship to anywhere in the country. Um, and right before school started, he just started hanging with a different crowd, and he was staying out later. He, you know, was pushing the limits, and um, it, it just went on for a while. Um, Ed lived just with me. Um, I wasn't with his father, and and um, he just, I don't know, things were just getting a little bit out of control. And um, when I spoke to his father, he had friends um, that we actually went to school with in the Wilkes-Barre Police Department. And we knew Ed was at an underage drinking party, so we sent them in um, just to get him out of there. We wanted to put a scare into him and just get him back on track. And, you know, he just had too much to lose to go down that path. So he was like, um, like many teenagers. Most teenagers want to experiment. They try things. They go through the, the bad right. years. So he was just dealing with that. So you feel that what this Judge Chivarella did was way too harsh for the offense that you think your son actually did. Right. The, drug, the paraphernalia but thing. He, my son went away for six months for that, and he sent him to, well, first he sat in the, that juvenile detention center for 30 days, and then came in front of Judge Chivarella, and at that time I had letters and coaches of teachers and coaches, a letter myself. My son cried, he just, okay, I just want to go back to my life, I want to wrestle, I want to get back to my life, and he, no, he wanted to send him. He told him he had a drug and alcohol problem, so he needed more help. Sent him to a boot camp, um, which he was in with all inner city kids, uh, murderers, gang members, arsonists. Uh, and, and, and you believe that your son just, just never, just never really got over this and sort of internalized it, and then and then no, he, he killed no, himself. No. So listen, that no, that outrage that we're seeing months. in front of the courthouse, that outrage, that was yes. what months, years of buildup that you had. Inside of yes. Me. Yeah, because this snowball, that time when he went in front of him, it never ended. It snowballed. He ripped my son's spirit. He killed his spirit. He just, he crushed him. He, um, he just, he, he didn't help him. He just, he knew he was wronged. He was so full of resentment and pent-up anger, and he was just not, he was never the same. And it snowballed. It went from one thing to the next. And the only reason I went there yesterday, I was at work, I couldn't go to that trial because I knew I couldn't contain my emotion when I saw that judge. And the only reason I was there is because I heard he was going to be taken by the court marshals and cuffed and taken away right to jail. And that's what I went there to see. And when I got there and learned that that was not the story, that he was going home with his daughter. And I said, none of these kids and, and they still wouldn't say, they were trying to say there was still no cash for kids. You know, no no remorse. Never did he ever uh, Sandra, say he sorry. He still says... Sandy, can, can, I, can I interrupt just for a second and ask? I mean, at this point you said your son was your life, and, and you don't know how things are right now. Can you ever forgive this judge? No, never. 
never. I, there is no justice. He'll never receive my sentence, what I have to live with every day of my life without my son. He left on that beautiful day yesterday to go back with his family. I have nothing anymore, and he still has no nothing. It was, it was all for nothing. It was all for greed and for more and more. He never had enough, and he took everything from me. And I'll never, never forgive him, no. Sandy, Fonzo, our hearts are with you, and I think the whole country, anyone who's watching this, would feel the same way, and we understand your rage in front of that courthouse. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so listen, uh, when we come back...